Hey guys, it's Kelly and I am back to do a video with you. This is a very temporary background. I'm just kind of sitting in the foyer of our home <laughs> so that I can get a lot of light through the storm door and that sort of thing. So I hope that it's not too distracting. Yes, I know I look really rough, but that's the whole point of being here. Today, I wanna to show you guys what I've been doing recently. This is my go-to everyday kind of makeup look. And I thought I would do that with you and kind of chat as we go. So yeah. Let's get started. Okay, my favorite things that I always use are the Scandinavia products and I have the finishing spray, which is almost gone, but I got plenty of my primer spray. Um, the finishing spray, I go back and forth between that and the Urban Decay All Nighter. This is just a sample size that I keep in my purse or, or in my, I have my makeup bag right here. And it, that's what I take with me where I travel everywhere. So I just pulled everything out because this is my normal everyday, my go-to stuff. So. I'm just going to go ahead and lightly spray my face and primer. I've already moisturized and all that kind of good stuff. So, I'm going to spray this. Just a very light spray is all it takes. I mean, it, this stuff is really great. It doesn't, um, you know, take very much. It's got a really fine mist, which I love. Um, but um, Skin and Amy makes the Urban Decay All Nighter and their other um, sprays. So, yeah, I just really, really love it. So, anyway, I've got my little floral ears on for spring and summer and I just wanted to go ahead and share with you guys what I've been doing recently. I have kind of gotten stuck in a rut when it comes to my makeup and I'm going to be trying to get out of that soon but I just thought hey you know let's go ahead and talk about what I do every single day because this mug needs to be fixed before she can go anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start with color correcting. One of the first things I do is I use my Smashbox color correcting stick in this darker orange there it is. <laughs> there it is. And that darker orange. And what I do is I use this and actually needs to be sharpened. But what I do, let me go ahead and grab my mirror so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Help. I've just got one of these big mirrors from Wally World that I'm using right now just because normally I would have my big vanity mirror in front of me and I could see what I'm doing, but I'm sitting in the middle of the hallway, so that's not working. <laughs> okay, so what I like to do is I just go in. And so if you see me looking over this direction instead of directly at you, it's because I'm looking at myself in the mirror. But what I do is I just kind of go through and I'm being careful about it. I just cover that whole area with orange. And I'm being careful because it needs to be sharpened and I don't want to hurt myself. Now, I know I look pretty much like a vampire in the feeding, but, and if you hear a little barking like that right there, that would be my parents' dog. Yeah, she's not on board with the filming. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the other things while that is there. I am going to be using the Urban Decay Color Correcting Fluid in green. I have a lot of redness. Um, you know, like this is a um, age spot. Guys, you know I'm older. My skin's starting to show. A lot of broken capillaries here on my cheeks, on my chin, and my lower jawline. So I like to color correct those things. And so I just go in with um, a little bit of that on the worst areas. And I've got like a couple of little scars right there that are still red. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so what I'm doing is I went ahead and bought the um, Real Technique sponge in the uh, travel case. And it's dirty. Don't judge me. I'm sorry. It's dirty. But anyway, I just go in with this flat side right here. And I start spreading this out over all this redness. Okay, so all I'm doing is just putting that on the worst parts. And I have gotten a little sun lately, so I'm even more red. Okay, let's go in with a little on the other side. Just slap it on there. It works, it works. Okay, so I just go ahead and do that. And I know the lighting's not great, but guys, when I get my foaming place ready, you'll see a huge difference in the quality 
I promise. I'll have a backdrop. I'll have lighting. I'm going to get it for you. I promise. Okay. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm just going to kind of put that to the side. Then I take just a flat. It says it's a large shader. It's just one of these little bitty flat brushes or whatever. And I just use that to smooth all this out just a little bit. I do want to leave it fairly concentrated under my eyes, even though it makes me look like I'm sick and in need of blood. But, you know, um, it, the whole purpose is to take down the color of the um, dark circles and bags under my eyes because they're just, I mean, they're real. So anyway, I hope you guys have been well. I hope you enjoyed the first video that I have put up on my channel. Um, well, since, you know, I've kind of transitioned into more of a beauty style channel. Um, but yeah, I, um, I hope you enjoyed the Q&A. Um, I'm going to film it when I finish this, but I'll put it up first. <laughs> because it's going to be a little bit of a um, an introduction to what I'm doing here on this channel. But um, yeah, I wanted to start with just an everyday look. And then um, I'm going to be filming some videos after I do my makeup too. So I guess I'm doing my makeup to film, but I'm filming myself doing my makeup. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's really all I use that one for. And I just, you know, that's, it is what it is. Yes, I have this greenish hue. Yes, I look very orange on my eyes, but I promise I'm going to fix it. It'll all be okay. There won't be any issues. I promise. <laughs> okay. The first thing that I want to do, I am still using, I love the NARS um, eye shadow concealer is the eyeshadow base the pro prime smudge proof eyeshadow base i still really love this um it does such a great job and um those of you that are either new or just don't know i am um now living on the gulf coast in alabama and it is very humid <laughs> very 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 humid and so um i have to do things where I know my makeup will stay and hold. It's got to be sweat proof every day, pretty much. And I have just found that this is the best eyeshadow primer. If you want a drugstore alternative, the Milani eyeshadow base is really great. Um, and I do like it if I'm doing an all drugstore look or whatever. But for my daily wear, because of where I live, this seems to work better. Okay, so I just kind of smudge that in with my um, fingers just a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it dry down just a little bit before I go right in. And what that's going to do is it's going to give it a really good tackiness. <laughs> it's going to give it a little bit of tack tackiness. And that way, when I go in with my shadows, it'll really cling to it and make a big difference. Okay. What I have been in love with lately for my brows, um, I have been using the new Maybelline Precise, uh, Maybelline Brow Precise Micro Pencil. And mine is in the color, um, what does it say? What does it say? Uh, it doesn't say. That's weird. I'm pretty sure it's like taupe. I'm pretty sure because I went kind of blonde with my hair and my roots are starting to grow back out, but you get the idea. So anyway, you have the spoolie on one end and the product on the other. So I'm just going to kind of go through and spoolie my brows. They have been, woo, wild lately. I have most of my brow um, hair is blonde, um, just naturally. So I have to go in and really define my brow um, area. And I do have a lot of patchiness right here. I don't know if you can see that, but I have to go in and kind of do it, but I feel like I look funny with a really strong brow. So I don't do a really strong brow. So basically I just start at the tip like most people. I just start filling in with color first and then I worry about um, shape. So I fill in where I see that there is some sparseness in the brow line itself. I go back and forth, sort of like I'm coloring in, I guess you could say. But yeah, I just kind of fill in that area like that right there. And this bright hair right here is so blonde that you can't even see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of give myself a tail. I'm just like very back and forth strokes. Um, so that's how I kind of get it started. And then I go underneath the brow line and on top 
I do bring it up into a point just a little bit right there. And like I said, I don't feel like I look great with a strong brow. So I don't, I don't do the kind of brow that you're gonna see the younger beauty guru is doing. This is something that just works for me. When I spoolie through it, it really, um, it's not, it's waxy, but it's not too waxy. And it's very pigmented, so it works really well. So I really like this. I've always liked Maybelline Eye products like this. I've never had any issues with it. There's people walking by and I bet they're thinking, what is that girl doing with those orange eyeballs? <laughs> I mean, even from the street, you've gotta be able to see this. I mean, they're, it, it, yeah. I feel like I would glow in the dark. But anyway, that, that's just kind of what I do for my brow. And then that's what my brow looks like. But you can see what a huge difference it makes. See, let me go do the other brow. Okay, they're definitely not twins. They might not even be sisters, but you know what? It works. <laughs> you do what you gotta do when you're older, guys, because I mean, honestly, there's nothing I can really do about my eyebrows at this point in time. Um, whatever I did as a younger person, over plucking and all that kind of stuff, I ruined my brows. But I've never really had great brows anyway. And I mean, it's been years um, since I first started doing my brows. But for the longest time, the majority of my adulthood, I really didn't do anything with my brows. I just left them as is because I wasn't really that, I didn't find it to be that important. I didn't realize how much they really frame your face. But anyway, that's that. So that's done. Okay, the next thing that I do is now that this is, uh, the eyeshadow base has had time to kind of dry down and get a little sticky, I start going in with my shadows. Okay, now I have just been totally stuck in this routine and I, I don't know why, but it just has. I have been using my Lorac Pro, this one, this is like the three, yes, this is a three, and the peach palette. Okay, so what I've been doing, and it'll be pretty clear which ones I'm using. Ah. Okay, yes, I've, I've hit pan. I just used this Morphe E14. It's just a little fluffy, fat, but short bristle brush. And what I do is I just go into this one that's called Canvas right here. I'm trying to be a, go a guru here, guys. But I just go into that really hard and heavy, fill my brush up, and when I do, then I just go in with um, that all over my lid, all the way up to my brow. I like that it's a short, fat, stubby kind of brush. That way I have lots of control, especially underneath my brow. Because this is just my base color. I don't like to set my eyes with my powder or anything like that. I just don't. Um, you know, eyeshadows are so much more finely milled and they're much more silky. And I just find that... Um, trying to blend on top of another eyeshadow color is much easier for me. And, you know, if you're, especially if you're just starting out in makeup, we are not really good at blending, then I would say go ahead and do um, something that's close to your skin tone all over your, your eye. And then the next eye, like I said, all the way up to the brow. I cover everything because I put that, that base over the entire eye. So, there's that. And the garbage can is now out in the middle of the street, it appears, because the garbage truck keeps coming through and the dogs keep barking and I'm getting interrupted to the point that it's almost comical. Anyway, um, yeah, if it keeps up, I'm gonna need a nerve pill. No doubt. <laughs> okay, so that's what I do to just get my eyes started. So, okay, that's pretty much all I use that palette for. And then that's when I go into my Sweet Peach. And um, I use a lot of different colors in here, depending on my mood, you know? But overall, I would say that what I have been doing the most, and I know some people don't want you to blow in your makeup. It's my makeup, nobody else is using it. I go into Summer Yum and Puree, these two right here. I mix them together on my Sigma E40. I just kind of go in and, let me just show you professionally. I just go in to both. Tap one time, and then when I do that, I go straight into the crease and I blow it out a little bit. I don't blow it all the way out to where it gets to my brow, but I do like to blow it out. I just like to do some really nice, simple, small circles as I'm working in that crease. I find that it just seems to blend so much easier and more neatly when I do that. 
and um, sometimes I do have to go in for a second dip. It depends on what I'm doing. If I'm going to the grocery store or I'm going to, you know, like take Izzy to the vet or just get gas or get my nails done. I mean, if it really doesn't matter, then what I do is um, I make one dip in there like I did or if you look at, you know, back, back and forth, back and forth. If I, we're gonna just use the same technique, my normal every day, but it's more of a nighttime, go on a date situation, then I would definitely you know, go back in and make it darker, that sort of thing. But for what I'm doing today, no, there's no need. So let me knock that off and let's get this eye started. But you can see, after it gets started blending, it really does darken up very well, which I love. You don't, I mean, these, these shadows are so pigmented that I, it really doesn't require a whole lot. Um, just be gentle with your eyes, you know, don't rub so hard that you're jerking the skin around really hard or anything like that, especially if you have mature skin. But if you have younger skin, please take care of your skin so that it won't turn out like mine. <laughs> oh gosh, every time I look at myself, I'm like, oh wow, I've got to do something with an orange. But, you know, hey, that's part of my color correcting. It's part of being old. One day you will understand. <laughs> but anyway. Um, that's what I like to do with that. So I just basically have that color through the crease. Then I take this, this is a more precise um, brush. It's an E28. You can see it's got a little bit of a, more of a point to it. That's when I go into this color called Charmed, I'm sure, which is this one right here. It's just this brown color. I go into that one and tap it once. And then I go into this outer corner. And in this outer corner, kind of blend it out just a little bit and then I bring it over into the crease just a touch and then I blend the outer corner and into the crease just a little bit just kind of repeat that a few times until it gets blended to the point that I'm happy with and it's kind of hard to tell I, I realize that this orange is very distracting but if you need color correcting you then you're probably used to that sort of thing if you have really tired eyes or you know a lot of deep circles you know that sort of thing then you probably are used to that so all right i'm gonna add more light to the situation and see if that helps us any nope probably not let's try it this direction okay maybe that'll help okay back into charmed i'm sure i'm going to Go into this outer area, lots of little circles, and then into that crease just a little bit, and back out. All I'm doing is just darkening up that outer corner. Okay. And it does look like I'm really being rough, but a lot of that is because my skin on my eyes is very um, loose because of my age. And um, yeah, so, you know, it's gonna get jerked around no matter what. Okay, now sometimes I'll just do a brow bone color and leave it like it is, and sometimes I won't. Now I'm gonna go back to my original crease brush and I'm just gonna blend it just a touch just to bling it out just a minute is all. And then I'm gonna go in with this little tapered uh, shading brush. It's an E70 from Sigma. And I'm going to go into this color. It's called, um, it's called Nectar, which is this color right here. It's kind of a golden color and it's got a little bit of shimmer to it. So I like to use it on my brow bone and, and I like that this is angled because I can really control where I'm putting that color at. And then I can go back in and blend out that edge Now, if I wanna add just a little something extra, then I might go in with one of the other shimmer colors and put it on the lid itself, but for an everyday look, this works for me just fine. And you can see, it's a really pretty highlight. Okay. 
So once I get that blended out, I just kind of look at it, make sure that I'm happy with the way that it's blended. Sometimes it's not like this right here. I'm not real happy because I do have some wrinkles that kind of come across my eye like this right here. Um, so sometimes it doesn't get blended perfectly. So I just go back in and blend a little more, just like that. And it seems to pretty much correct itself from that point. Okay, now let me just kind of dust off my under eye. And that is going to, this, this light is not right. I know it's not, guys. I mean, gosh, I'm trying. It's hard when you don't have filming space. Okay, the next thing that I am going to do is go in and let's work on the face. Now, I have been kind of um, going to my Born This Way. Um, I was using my Born This Way concealer, but I had to chunk it because, like, it broke, like, here. <laughs> like, this is the lid, and this, yeah, I know, it's dirty. But the concealer broke off right here. And I'm not really sure what caused it to do that, but yeah, just out of the blue one day it was broken and I don't know why. Um, I do not like to, I am gonna shake it just a little bit. I don't like to put a tremendous amount of product on my forehead. I have a lot of these deep, sorry, a lot of these deep uh, creases here and everything sort of, you know, like sinks into those lines and settles there. So, I mean, just a tiny little dot is all I'm doing. And I'm gonna go in with my Real Techniques brush I'm just gonna blend that out over the whole forehead. It's not a whole lot, but it provides the coverage I need for that area without causing any cakiness in that very highly wrinkled area. Okay. And you can see, it gives me all I really need for that area. Now I do go in with a touch of concealer right between my brows when I'm doing my concealer. But other than that, this works out pretty good for me. Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda go in now and I'm gonna go down my nose, across my chin, my upper lip, and blow in. I don't do multiple layers um, on a daily basis. Now, I would do multiple layers if I'm going somewhere, you know, I'm getting dressed up or whatever. It's a very buildable, coverage. I mean, you can reach full coverage with this quite easily, but with this humid environment and the heat or whatever for everyday wear, it's not necessary. It's really not. And that's even with, you know, all of my issues that I am trying to cover. So it works. And I love the Born This Way foundation. I think it's just a really pretty foundation. It leaves a really pretty finish on the skin. Just not sure what I'm gonna do about this light. I'm trying. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, now we're gonna do this area, and because there's more there, I have to space to cover. I have to put a little bit extra on there. I don't go all the way underneath the eye, but I do go up on the eye a good bit. Obviously, I go down under the edge where I blended out that green concealer. Goes. I'm trying to make sure that I get enough coverage that I don't look like an alien. And it works. Other side. And guys, I don't know what to do about this uh, age mark because it's been there so long and I can't seem to get it even with um, concealer. I can't seem to get it to cover. So I've pretty much given up on it. I mean, you know, I try to cover it, but it's pretty stubborn. So if you guys have any ideas of, you know, like I've tried the purple, I've tried the yellow, I've tried the orange, I've tried everything to cover it and it just doesn't want to cover. I'm going to need a little extra on this side. You can kind of judge, you can see what's covering and what's not and judge how much you need. And like I said, I don't like to put a big layer of foundation on for just daily wear because it's too heavy, it's hot, and it tends to just settle on fine lines and creases if it's not set perfectly well. So, yeah. After I have finished putting my makeup on my entire face, I like to go to, towards my ear just a little bit on each side so I don't have a line, and then I go down 
because you do not want that line of demarcation as we always said. But no, seriously, you don't want that to show, especially if your foundation is not a perfect match. You don't want that to happen. So, um, because you can fix it with concealer by lightening it up, or you can, you know, add bronzer to darken it up. But if you've got a big line, it's kind of hard to hide that. Okay. The next step is going to be concealer, and we're finally going to get rid of all of this orangeness under the eyes. Okay, the concealer I'm going to be using is the Naked Skin Concealer, and mine is in the color Light Warm. I do have um, some pretty warm undertones. Um, I prefer Light Neutral uh, because I do have some pink, pink tones and warm tones, but anyway, this works for me. And I don't put as much as I used to, but since it's only a um, very light layer of foundation, I'm not heavy handed with it, but I'm not using it sparingly. It's kind of a medium amount that I like to use. I do come down the very side of my nose because I have a lot of pores there. Um, I do like to, if I'm going somewhere out and I'm really dressing up, I like to use a pore filling primer over my nose because it really helps that. Um, but I do like to make sure that, you know, the product gets in there. I mean, I do have to unclog those congested pores, but it's just part of the getting ready process for me. Not everybody has those. And I just kind of, no rhyme or reason, I just... Put it on there. And then I blend it out. And you can see, sorry about the lighting guys. I know it's bad. But you get the idea, I hope. <laughs> I hope you do. I thought this might be an easy place to film. But then again, it's proving to be quite challenging with the lighting, so we'll just have to see from there. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put just a touch on the tip of my nose. I'm going to put a touch right there and a touch right there. And that's all I'm going to do with concealer um, because I really don't need a whole lot of product, as I mentioned, on my forehead. But it helps lighten up the center of my face. And because it lightens up the center of my face, I'm okay with it. I do like to try and avoid the brows if I can. I'm not finished with the brows, but the majority of it is done. This helps with the redness on my nose. Blah, 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 blah. And then of course my chin can always use extra coverage because if I eat or drink or anything like that, you know, that whole area is going to really suffer. So, okay. I have been, I do have my Laura Mercier and I will kind of sometimes, you know, shift back and forth, but I've been using my Bed Night Luxury Powder in uh, Cameo, which is a kind of a pale pink. It's very brightening. I like it a lot. So I've just been kind of dipping in there with my, my beauty blender. And I know that a lot of people say, don't do this, you know, but what I do is I just go wherever I put concealer, I go in and I set it. And that's what I do. And I don't just bake. I actually sit it. And, and you know, you gotta make sure that you've got a damp sponge. And for me, it's the best way to keep from having creasing and that sort of thing. Now, if you don't use a setting spray, you are gonna have a lot of cakiness. So be sure that you have a good setting spray or you have something like, oh, I don't know, like Smashbox primer water, anything like that, that you can use to knock down the cakiness. And so there's that. Okay, next step. Oh, and I'm tired and I'm thirsty. Totally addicted to diet ginger ale. Love ginger ale. Okay, 
The next thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish my eyes before I do my face. That way, if I need to clean up anything, I can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go in with my MAC liner, um, eyeliner in um, Costa Riche. Um, found out about this from, this used to be a holy girl for Kathleen on Lights. And I've just kind of gotten addicted to it because of the color that it is. And so I just kind of go in and line the waterline. It also needs to be sharpened. It's always, it's always better if it's sharpened. And then I go about a fourth of the way, maybe a third of the way out on the lash line itself and not the water line. So yeah, maybe about a third of the way out on the bottom lash line. I don't bring it all the way in because I don't want to totally close up my eyes. So that's what I do with that. And then I take, this is a Morphe E24. It's just a pencil brush. It's really dirty. I go back again into the Charmed, I'm sure, which is this right here. Knock it off. And I just sort of pounce on it just a little bit and then I kind of blend it just just a touch just enough to give my lash line some definition and that's all I really do it's like setting it with powder I'm setting it with the, the shadow okay so that's what I do you can see and then sometimes what I'll do is I'll kind of flick it out just a little bit to give it if I don't want to do eyeliner, and guys, I'm terrible at eyeliner, so sometimes I'll just flick it just a little bit to give it an up, uh, to give it an upturned look. That way, it has more of a happy look than you know, kind of a drawn down look. And that's pretty much all there is to that. Then what I'm going to do is I have another pencil brush that's an E30 from Sigma. I'm going to go back into the um, nectar color, which is this gold color I used in are on my brow and I'm just going to do a little bit of that right in the inner corner for a little something something just to further open my eye up because I really like the way that looks I think you can see the difference And that's that for the eyes. Okay, I can put all of those um, eye products away now. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with my um, fluffy brush, which is just E3 from um, Morphe, and I'm going into my Rimmel Stay Matte Pressed Powder. I'm just gonna go in with that, and I'm just gonna kind of set everything all over. I'm already working on underneath the eyes, knocking away any fallen shadow, anything that, you know, like a fallout of any kind. So, I just go ahead and I set the whole face. And I do focus on my T-zone because that seems to be where I have the most trouble. And that is what I do with that. The next step is going to be, I think my favorite step ever, bronzer. This is the um, Marc Jacobs uh, Omega Tantastic. Um, or is the Omega Bronzer, yeah, Omega Bronze, fantastic, and it does smell like coconut. And guys, this was not cheap. And I've been using it all summer for the last two years, and you can still see the lines. Now, there's a dip in it, but those lines obviously were pretty deep. But um, I have the matching brush. This is the most amazing, beautiful brush. I just kind of go in there, swirl around, and then I'll work on my face, and it smells so good. I feel like I'm like treating myself every time this brush, it, it touches my face and that, you know, I bronze up with this particular um, bronzer. I mean, it is just a, oh, it's an amazing product. And I, I mean, it's one of those that I really hyped up things. Um, if you watch a lot of beauty videos on YouTube, but I'm going to tell you what guys, it is so worth it. I saved up for this. Um, when I found out they were going to re-release it last summer, I saved it for it, and I, I never, I've never gone back. Um, I think the only other thing that I've used, I've used my Shade and Light palette a couple of times. I've used my Hula just a couple of times, and I've used um, my Sweet Tea Bronzer from uh, Too Faced. I've used those, but as far as just a couple of times using those things, I do like to bronze the perimeter of my face. I just love this bronzer. It is so beautiful. It smells so good and it's just so well. Do go down and around that area. And just for fun, 
just for funsies. I go ahead and hit underneath there. It's gorgeous, guys. And I, I mean, it's worth every dime. Every dime. And this brush is ridiculously expensive, as Kathleen likes to say. But oh, so worth it. Okay, let's keep that straight. Now, okay, now I have um, my blush that I've been addicted to is the Milani Baked Blush in the Cult Classic Luminoso. I just have this hour double ended, uh, dual ended hourglass brush here. Um, I like using this for my um, blush. I just kind of go in there, knock off the excess. I start here on the apples of my cheeks, but I kind of work it back and kind of blend in with that bronzer. And I like this particular blush for the summertime because it's a pretty peachy color and it goes with the warm look that I have on my eyes, but it's got a luminescence to it. And so it does bring a little bit of shine to your eyes, which I really love. And I just like to blend it together. Just like that. And I mean, it doesn't really require a whole lot because you can see, even though this light is very, very harsh, you can still see it's a pretty, pretty um, blush because I don't like to overdo it with my blushes. The next thing that I go in with, obviously, is going to be my highlighter. And I do like the Laura Geller Gilded Honey. I've gone back to it time and time again. And for this, I'm just gonna use a Real Techniques brush. This is their, it's, it says a setting brush, but I use it for that because I can keep, you know, a good bit of control and I just really make sure because I don't want to emphasize any of this here, I stay right on top of the cheekbone. And I do like to put just a little bit right in the top arch of my brow and come down just a touch. I just don't like it to be too heavy. But I don't like it to get into that under eye area that I have worked so hard to conceal. So I'm just really concerned about just the top and then here and here with any extra I bring down. I just don't, you can see, oh my God, it's so gorgeous. I mean, this was a cult classic for a while too. Not hard to figure out why. I mean, that's on. I always do the bridge of my nose, just the tip of my nose. And I, sometimes I'll do my um, keep us bow, but more often than not, I don't. Okay, so that's what I do with that. And then what I like to do is I go in with my all over fluffy brush and I just kind of go over it and make sure there's not any excess just sort of hanging out in the peach fuzz on my face or anything like that. I do try to keep that, you know, shaved off, but you know, um, still have it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go through with this little on thing and I'm just gonna brush my brows. Just to make sure that they are all laying in the direction they need to be laying because I've been moving stuff around on my face a lot. And then what I'm gonna do is I have been using the NYX Tinted Brow Mascara and this is in brunette, which is really too dark for me, but I've just been making it work because my roots really need to be done. Um, my hair has um, been bleached blonde, but I've got about this much that's grown out that's gotta be done, but you know, girl ain't got $200 at the moment, so I've been letting on grow. Um, so I've been making do with this. Um, and it's a great product, you know, it's got a great little um, thing here. I just very, very lightly touch the brow and run this through the brow. Not only does it provide color, but staying power. And I really like that. And it seems to work. So guys, even though I say I don't really like totally, you know, uh, bold brows, these really, and you know, uh, as far as uh, beauty uh, gurus go, this is actually a pretty tame brow because it's not, you know, it, it's not drawn in and it's not pointed and, you know, really sharp angles and that sort of thing. I just kind of go with the flow as far as the natural look of my brow and fill in the areas that are sparse and then I just go with that. So I give that a minute to um, dry 
And um, while I'm letting that dry is usually when I start thinking about my lashes. So I'm going to um, save my mascara for last, but I'm gonna go ahead and curl my lashes. And I just have this little curler that I got a couple of Christmases ago, and it is a it's from Tarte. So I'm just gonna kinda curl my lashes. And what I do is I start at the root, and I kinda bounce, 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 and then I come out and further, and that's the way that I do it. That way it kind of curls it all the way out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with the uh, finishing spray that I like from Scandinavia. And I'm gonna give myself a good spray. Um, sometimes if I'm super cakey looking, what I'll do is I'll take this Kills Ultra Facial Toner and um, what I'll do is I'll put some of it right on the tip end of my uh, beauty sponge and I'll just kind of, you know, soak it in just a little bit and I'll just dab it under my eyes or anywhere else that has, you know, gotten really cakey. But it has to be sh uh, shaken and so does this. It's best to always shake these products. So I shake this and then after I have sprayed my face, then I'll go in with that if needed. But some, most of the time, this is just enough. It's got such a wonderful fine mist. Okay, and then it's all about taking your time and letting it dry. And I wait to do my mascara, whether it's waterproof or not, after this, because if you spray this on regular mascara, it's going to go down. If your my lashes are long enough on the bottom, they actually touch my cheeks. Um, and even waterproof mascara, if it's still wet, will run. So then you'll have a real good mess because it's waterproof and it's hard to get off. So um, I just make sure that, you know, I fan myself and um, I know I'm not one of the fancy with the little fan and all that, no. Mm -mm. No, girl does it the cheap way. I use actual elbow grease. <laughs> I just do what I got, guys. That's all there is to it. I use what I got. Okay, so I've got this just about dry out on my face. Like I said, it's a very fine mist. I mean, it's the finest mist. It's, that's the best mist, I think, that I've seen in a product ever. Now, if you are really, really super dry, and I am pretty dr dang dry, but if you're super, super dry and you need a, to quench this, you know, a parched dryness, desert-like situation while you're putting your makeup, you can do this after you have powdered, before you do your cheek products and things. You can use this and let it dry and then go in and finish with a finishing spray. And that'll help a lot. It just depends. And you know, during the winter, I'll do that. But living now that I'm living down here and I'm in a milder you know, climate and it's more humid and that sort of thing, I've found that I'm not really needed to do that. But you know, it is what it is. And also don't forget, you can use the Urban Decay All Nighter. They both work really well. There's been a couple of times where I've been partying all weekend lately, <laughs> unfortunately, but yeah, partying all weekend. And what happens is I have found that I'll fall asleep I'll go to bed, fall asleep, and forget to take my makeup off. I wake up the next morning and my makeup looks exactly the same as it did when I went, not, went to bed the night before. <laughs> so, I mean, it, this, the shiz works. So, there's that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off camera. I'm just going to do my lashes. I'm going to go ahead and just use um, just the regular uh, Maybelline. I'm not, let's see, is this the waterproof? Which one's the waterproof? This is the waterproof. Okay, I use this if I know when I'm going to be somewhere where I'm going to be sweating a lot or if it's rainy outside or anything like that. I'm going to use the Great Lash from Maybelline. This is just a cult class. It's been in the drugstore for years and with good reason. It's a great one. So let me go do this and I'll be right back. I am doing two coats on my mascara. You can see the difference. I'm doing two coats because my lashes, they're long, but they are not full. So since it's just my daytime, everyday look, there's no point in going in with false lashes or a real dramatic, uh, I'm not using a primer to beef them up or anything like that. I'm not gonna do anything to try and make it, you know, larger than they really are because um, it's just not necessary. You know, this is just your everyday makeup that you can wear to work or you can wear to, um, you know, out on the weekend, during the day, when you're just running errands, or any time that you obviously wanna wear makeup, but you don't wanna go like full glam. That's what this is. This is just an everyday situation for me. And I put just a little bit on the tip of my lashes. I don't go in real heavy, but then after I do that, I go back to the upper lashes one more time with no additional product. And that's that. 
I smell lashes, guys. Now, I will most of the time take the time to actually fan and let them dry because if I don't, because my lashes are long, they will touch either my lid or they'll touch down below. So I just try to close my eyes. I keep my eyebrows raised as high as possible and that's the reason you can see that I have wrinkles. Um, and that's the reason I'm not smiling really big or anything like that because if I raise my cheeks up, sure enough, it's gonna hit every time. So that's what I do. Okay, now like I said, if you are, you know, still cakey, something like this works really good. You just wanna dampen your sponge with something like this. I got the idea about this from Wayne Goss. I watched his videos and he had a video on this a really long time ago. It has squalene or squalene in it or whatever, but anyway, it's a very amount and very, um, it increases the moisture and helps to hold in moisture. And there's just something about that. So that's what he suggests to do. So I started doing it because he suggested it for mature skin, but it works for all kinds of skin if it's really cakey looking. You can really take down the cake bake with that kind of a product. So that's what he is now. Yeah, uh, Kills is not a cheap product, but it's still full up to here. And I've had it a year. I mean, it only takes just a, like maybe three or four drops and you're good to go. So anyway, that's that. Now let me find a lipstick. Okay, I'm not going to be using a lip liner, but I am going to be using, this is the um, Kat Von D Everlasting Liquid Lipstick. These are my favorite liquid lipsticks. I absolutely love this stuff. I think it is beautiful. This is in the color Beloved, which is a beautiful, I mean, I just think this is a beautiful spring and summer color. But before I do, I want to go ahead and clean my lips. I don't want any foundation or other products on there. Usually when I'm filming somewhere and I've got all my stuff laid out and it's not just a temporary situation like this, then what I'll do is I'll actually, um, I'll go in and I'll use a lip balm and you know, they'll be getting nice and soft while I'm doing this, but not there yet. We're just going to go in with this. I really like that it has a really long wand and it's angled. And so it makes it really easy to do. Let me get my mirror. And I start on the bottom on the inside. Really easy to control. I know that she gets on a lot of people's nerves and she stays in a lot of hot water with other people. But her products are still good and I like them and I spent money on them so I'm gonna use them. Sorry. Okay. Guys, that's it. That's all I do. I do that. Now, it took me a really long time to film this with you guys, but I was also talking and instructing and telling you what I was doing and where I was doing, what color I was using, and all that kind of stuff as I was going. That was fast. <laughs> anyway, guys, let me see. Okay, I turned off the harsh light. Probably shouldn't have even had that on at all. Probably would have helped as we were filming, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm learning, guys. I have got, this is the first... Um, to makeup tutorial style video that I have done in a very, very long time. So, um, yeah, I hope that you uh, enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed seeing just the products that I've just been in the habit of, you know, keeping in my makeup bag and using on a daily basis. Now, what I'll do every day, um, pretty much, um, if I've washed my hair, I'll curl it and I'll pull it up into a ponytail. But if it's not been washed like today, um, if I need to, I'll use some dry shampoo, but for the most part, I really don't need to, but I just do like a little messy bun, but mine is more like, um, I call it a butterfly. <laughs> I just wrap my twist around it a couple of times. And then what I do is I just bring it up into, and I don't pull it all the way through, just sort it through like that right there. Um, and that way, um, the majority of the length that's still in there is hung at the back. And I'm ready to go. I mean, that's just easy. This is the best thing. The wind down here near the Gulf is, you know, there's always a breeze. So if you have long hair, it stays in your face. So if you want to wear lip gloss, I mean, it's just like you have to do this. But um, yeah, this is just my easy everyday messy little bun kind of situation. And it's the way that I go. 
Um, so yeah, you guys are going to see a couple of videos with me in the same shirt and the same makeup and all that kind of thing with my hair looking the same, but I wanted to film these videos so that I could upload them on a regular basis for you guys. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope that you stay and subscribe. I would really love for you to do that. Just hit the like button, subscribe if you like, which I would really very much appreciate. And yeah, you don't have to have mature skin. You just have to be you and have a love of makeup and beauty and all things lifestyle and that sort of thing to watch. So that's going to be it. Thank you guys for being here again. I love you.